forward with our discussion about the accounting cycle, we want to now focus on adjusting entries. So really what we want to focus on when we're talking about adjusting entries is the fact that we need to make sure that we are adhering to the matching principle and the revenue recognition principle. So adjusting entries makes it possible to report on the balance sheet the appropriate assets, liabilities, and owner's equity at the statement date. It also reports on the income statement that are proper revenues and expenses for the period because we record revenues in the period in which services are performed and, experience, and expenses are recognized in the period in which they are incurred. So let's look at some different types of adjusting entries. The first types are deferrals. We have two types of deferrals. We have prepaids and we have unearned revenues. Prepaid expenses are expenses paid in cash before they are used or consumed, uh, like prepaid rent or prepaid utilities. And then we have unearned revenues, which is cash is received before services are performed. Now this specific video is going to focus on these two types of deferrals. In a later video, we'll talk about accruals, which is the second type of adjusting entries. We have accrued revenues and we have accrued expenses. Accrued revenues is when you have revenues for services performed but not yet received in cash. Accrued expenses are expenses that are incurred but not yet paid in cash. So now let's look at some examples of prepaids. So again, deferrals are either prepaids, which we'll talk about now, Remember, prepaids are things that you have paid in advance and not yet used up. So when you adjust these, that means you are now using them up and you need to expense them because you're incurring that expense. So you will credit that prepaid account, whatever it might be, prepaid rent, prepaid utilities, and you are debiting the, the, the expense account like rent expense or utilities expense. Unearned revenues... Remember the original entry when you recorded the unearned revenue was a liability. Unearned revenue is when you have received cash in advance of you actually doing something, either performing a service or providing a product. So when you adjust the fact that you have now earned that money, you would actually debit the liability and credit the revenue, showing that you have earned that. So prepaid expenses again are assets that you have paid for and recorded before a company actually uses them. So the cash payment happens before the expense is actually recorded. And some examples of this would be insurance, rent, supplies, buildings and equipment would actually be an example of a prepaid because as you use that up you're actually recording depreciation. And then advertising. All those examples are, are prepaids. So, so again, let's look at some examples here. So let's start with supplies. So Pioneer Advertising, they purchased advertising supplies costing $25,000 on October the 5th. And we need to prepare the journal entry to record the purchase of the supplies. Now this would not actually be an adjusting entry here. This is just recording the purchase. We're going to start with that. So again, we're getting supplies and we're paying cash. So we would debit supplies for the $25,000, credit cash, and they would simply post that journal entry to the ledger. So that's recording the actual purchase. Now let's look at an, at an actual adjusting entry for supplies. So we took account of inventory at the close of business on October 31st and we found that we had $10,000 of supplies left. So how would we actually record what we used up? So we don't want to actually record the $10,000 because that's what we have left in ending inventory. An ending balance is not a transaction. But we want to know how we got to that $10,000. So we can simply see that by looking at our T account. So we started out with supplies at $25,000. Now we took account and we see that we have $10,000 left. So how did we get from $25,000 to $10,000? We must have used up $15,000 in supplies. So we're going to have to credit supplies for $15,000 and we will debit supplies expense for $15,000 showing that we have used up some of our supplies. So if we look at this on the balance sheet, 
we see the supplies account shows what we still have left to use. So what will be our future economic benefit worth of supplies is $10,000. If we look at the companion account to that on the income statement, which is supplies expense, we can see the amount that we have used up this period, in this period's October. So continuing forward with examples of prepaids, let's look at insurance. So on October the 4th, Pioneer Advertising paid $6,000 for a one-year insurance policy, coverage beginning October the 1st. We need to prepare the entry to record the purchase of the insurance. So real quickly, push pause and see if you can journalize the purchase of the insurance. Be careful, this is not an adjusting entry. You're recording the purchase of the insurance. Okay, so now that you've got your journal entry to record the purchase of insurance, hopefully what you did there is you debited prepaid insurance because it's something you haven't used up yet, so it's an asset, so prepaid insurance of $6,000. You credit cash for $6,000, and then we will simply post that, shift that information from the journal to the ledger, and post a debit to our prepaid insurance account and a credit to our cash account. So an analysis of the policy reveals that $500, which is 6,000 divided by 12, of insurance expires each month. So at the end of October, we have to journalize the fact that we have used up one month of our prepaid insurance. So to do that, it's $500 per month. So we will record a debit to insurance expense. We've now used up one month's prepaid insurance. So debit prepaid expense for $500 and credit prepaid insurance for $500 because we've now used up $500 of our prepaid insurance. So now we have $5,500 left in that asset account prepaid insurance. Again, that would be reflected on the balance sheet. Our prepaid insurance now shows a balance of $5,500. That's the portion of the assets cost that still is there to provide a future economic benefit. And on the income statement, we have the counter to that, the insurance expense, which shows us how much of that prepaid insurance we have used up this period in October. Depreciation is another example of a prepaid expense. Here we have Pioneer Advertising estimates depreciation on its office equipment to be $400 per month. We need to prepare the entry to record depreciation for the month of October. Now, recording depreciation, the journal entry is always the same. We always debit depreciation expense. We always credit accumulated depreciation on whatever the asset is. So in this case, it would be accumulated depreciation office equipment for that $400. And then we would simply move that account down to our T accounts. So again, the depreciation expense is showing the using up of that asset. And accumulated depreciation is the contra asset account that we keep on the balance sheet to reflect the new book value of the asset. Remember, assets are, are kept on the books at what we pay for them. It's historical cost. So we, hear, we see here the equipment is still on the books at $50,000, even though we have depreciated it $400, bringing the book value of the asset down to $49,600. And of course, on the income statement, we would have our depreciation expense. At this point, we have $400 in that depreciation expense account for the period. The next deferral we'll look at is unearned revenues. So again, receipt of cash before the services are performed is recorded as a liability, and that liability is called unearned revenues. So in this case, the cash receipt is before the revenue is recorded. Some examples of unearned revenues are rent, if you're the landlord, airline tickets, tuition, magazine subscriptions, and customer deposits. So let's look at an example here. Pioneer Advertising received $12,000 on October the 2nd from KC for advertising services expected to be completed by December 31st. We need to prepare the journal entry to record the receipt on October the 2nd. So we have gotten cash of $12,000 for something that we're going to perform later. Okay, so we owe this service to someone. So again, we will debit cash for $12,000 and credit the liability account unearned service revenue because we plan to do something in the future. And then, of course, we'll move that journal entry down to the T accounts 
with a debit to cash and a credit to unearned service revenue. Well, analysis revealed later that Pioneer Advertising has now earned $4,000 of the advertising services in October. So now we need to prepare the entry to show the earning of that $4,000. So now we no longer owe them $4,000 of advertising services. We've now earned it. So we have to take $4,000 out of the liability account and credit it to the revenue account, showing that we have now earned it. So we will debit unearned service revenue, the liability account, decreasing it by $4,000, and we will credit service revenue for $4,000. And then, of course, we will post that, that journal entry to the ledger, bringing our, our credit balance and service revenue to $104,000 and our uh, credit balance in unearned service revenue to $8,000. And that, of course, will be um, <clears throat> represented in the balance sheet where we would find the liability account, the unearned service revenue there in, under liabilities of $8,000. And that's how much we still have to provide we owe that to someone. And then on the income statement, we would find the service revenue that we have earned up to this point, that $106,000 for this period.